Thank you, Mr. Dana. Holy is the Lord. The Bible says, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Well, we could, we could go many ways with that. Many ways with that. Today's message, the title of the message is, uh, Do You Feel Like an Outcast? And as I was walking through this text, there are many. Uh, next week we will, we will be, if the Lord does not uh, move otherwise, say otherwise, we will be in John chapter 4 uh, again next week trying to work through this. Uh, the title of this message could have been uh, Flowing Wells, the Living Water, the Gift of Life. This week I've been dealing with some things and I pray that uh, uh, the Word of God saturates our mind and our life every day and let the Word of God just dwell in you richly, what the Bible says. This week, do you feel like an outcast? Do you feel uh, downtrodden? Do you feel a burden? Can I tell you that there is a one who is your burden bearer? He says, my yoke is easy. Give it. And I can't remember exactly where that scripture is, but give it and I will give you rest. Lay your burden on him. Do you feel like an outcast? Today we will walk through uh, the scriptures of John chapter 4, 7 through 15. The Samaritan woman. He came to the Samaritan woman. We read about it last week. We talked about it last week. Uh, in verse 1, just give you a little recap. The Lord knew the, the conditions of the heart of the Pharisee. The Lord knows the condition of your heart and my heart today. He knew. Verse number 4, but he needed to go through Samaria. He, had, he went after the one. He left the 99 and went after the one. <clears throat> so he came to Samaria. Now Jacob's well, verse 6 says, Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus therefore being weary. He was uh, 100% God. He was 100% man. He was tired. He was weary. So the Lord knows everything. The Lord knows where he needs to be. But he was gave us an example on how we were supposed, supposed to live because he lived it the way we need to live it. Verse number 7, where we will start today. And it says, A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. Here we are dealing with the woman. We talked about it last week. How women went to the well together. They went as a group in the morning time, in the evening time, to draw water for the things that were needed at the house. But I want you to realize, I want you to recognize that that word woman is singular. She was there by herself and that was not customary. Also, in verse 6, if you'll see, it was the sixth hour we talked about last week. It was being uh, it was during lunchtime, being 12 uh, o'clock midday. That was not customary as well. Not to be there by yourself, not to be there at noon. So do you feel like an outcast? We see this lady, she was an outcast. It, it doesn't actually uh, say that in Scripture, but she, was, uh, she came there alone. Then also she was a Samaritan woman. And we'll see later on in verse 9, he says, Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you being a Jew asked a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? There was uh, a separation in 2 Kings chapter 17, I don't have time to go there today, but if you will jot that down, 2 Kings chapter 17, there's separation of the tribes of Israel, of the tribes of Judah and Benjamin. That separation began there, and that's how the uh, turmoil began with Samaria. 
And that's why the, the Jews and Samaritans did not come together. That's why many Jews went around Samaria. But you see, it says, but Jesus, but he needed to go through Samaria. Why? Because he knew who was going to be there. And he knew what time she was going to be there. And she knew what, he knew what position she was going to be in when she got there. <clears throat> so this time, let's read verse 7 through 15 and we'll dive in. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus in answer said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get the living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as well as his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst, but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst, nor come here to draw. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the word. Lord, as we come to this time of reading the scriptures and walking through the scriptures, may our eyes be open, may our hearts be open, may our ears be in tune with what you would have us to hear this morning. Lord, just please be with my mouth. Let the words of my mouth be yours and yours alone. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So verse 7 says, a, Samari, a woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. Can I tell you, that was customary for a woman, a, a man to come and ask of water because that's where the women were. They came and draw water for the livestock, for the houses, for everything else. But as I mentioned earlier, it was the wrong time of the day for them to be there. But guess what? God knows where he, where you are. God knows where you're going to be. You remember in Genesis chapter 3, we talked about Wednesday night, that God went into the Garden of Eden and said, Adam, where are you at? It's paraphrasing. I don't think he's, I don't think God talked Georgian. He said, Adam, where, where are you? Do you understand that that wasn't for God? God knew exactly where Adam was. That was for Adam to realize where he was, where the relationship was between him and God. That wasn't nothing. Has it ever occurred to you that nothing occurs to God? He knows everything. We, we see in verse 1, he knew the condition of the Pharisee's heart. He knew where this woman was going to be. And if you go to verse 18, we don't have time to go there, but if you go to verse 18, 17 and 18, he even knew about her situation. He said, go get your husband. Oh, I don't have any husband. Oh, yeah, the man that you're with now is not your husband. He knows the condition of our heart. Do you understand, if, if you are going through something today, I don't know if you deal with depression. I don't know if you deal with things that uh, come at you and, and, and just saturate your mind and, and just gives you the mully grubs. Miss Cindy can say, Miss Amy can tell you that sometimes I come in and shut my door because I don't want to be bothered with. Why do you think the sermon title is, Do You Feel Like an Outcast? Sometimes I am so darkened by things that come into my life that I have to get along with God in order for God to let me see that His mercy is new every morning. 
Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understandings in all, his, all your ways. Acknowledge Him and He will direct the path. You see what's going on with the Samaritan woman? She was an outcast. Nobody liked her. Nobody went with her. That's not customary to be alone. It's not customary to be there at noon. She was by herself. Not only did she have that going against her, but also she was a Samaritan woman. Jews did not have any dealing with Samaritans, and we'll see that in just a minute. Verse 8 says, For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. I was reading Oliver B. Green this week, and uh, he says, he makes a statement in his commentary that it's amazing... It's neat how Jesus fed the 5,000 with uh, fish and bread. But here in this verse, it says that disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. You understand, if Jesus can make a meal out of uh, fish and loaves, he can provide his own food. But you understand, he, he, Oliver B. Green said he didn't use miracle Miracles to uh, fulfill his, his personal agenda. He wanted to glorify God and only God. Do you understand when Satan uh, tempted him when he came out of, the wit, uh, out of the desert? He could have turned those stones into bread. He didn't have to be hungry because he is God. In the wilderness, he, he gave uh, the children of Israel manna. And quail and water. He provided the way. He provides the way for you. He didn't have, the disciples didn't really have to go in there. But he did not use miracles. He did not use his power to fulfill his personal desires. He wanted everything about him was to glorify God. He made much of the Father in everything that he did. In Matthew 14, it tells about the great multitudes that he fed. But I thought it was amazing. I thought it was fascinating that his disciples, it pointed out in there, that his disciples had went to go get food. And then you think about how God, how God provides. Of Philippians 4.19, my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. Everything that I need, God will supply it. So I want to tell you, whatever you are going through, just remember God. Can I go real quick? It's not in my uh, notes at this time, but I'm going to go there. Psalms chapter 3, verse 1 through 8. It is in my notes, but it's in the bottom. I just feel like we need to go there right now. Psalms chapter 3, verse 1 through 8 says, Lord, how they have increased who trouble me. Many they... Many are they who rise up against me. Many are they who say of me, there is no help for me in God. Selah. But you, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory and the one who lifts up my head. I cried to the Lord with my voice and he heard me from his holy hill. Selah. I lay down and slept. I awoke, for the Lord sustains me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God. For you have struck all my enemies on the cheekbone. You have broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessings is upon your people, Selah. Whatever you are dealing with today, whatever you deal with in life, give it to God. You can read all through the book of Psalms. And there is comfort all through the book of Psalms. I I believe there's comfort in Leviticus. If you're reading in the Leviticus and going through a struggle, guess what? God can give you comfort through Leviticus. 
Genesis to Revelations is the scarlet thread of redemption all the way through it. We have to read it. We have to understand it. We have to let the Holy Spirit deal with us, whatever we are going through in life. The Word of God is there to help you and to encourage you and to direct you and to guide you. Verse 9 says, Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. You see, in, verse, in John chapter 3, Nicodemus comes and asks him the question, this Samaritan woman saying, How is it that me, being a Samaritan woman, you ask a drink of me? Because Jews do not deal with have dealings with us. We are outcasts. We don't uh, share the same thoughts. We don't do the same things. So how? In Luke chapter 10, verse 30 through 37, it's the story of the Samaritan, the good Samaritan. When the Pharisees and the scribes and all these passed by, what did the Samaritan do? He picked him up. He bandaged him up. He put him on his beast and took him to the to the uh, inn. And then he told the innkeeper, "Hey, if anything, if you spend anything more than what I've gave you, I will pay for it when I come back." What is that a picture of? The cross. The cross. He paid a debt he did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. He left the 99 and went after the one. The woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink for me, a Samaritan woman? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. She could not understand it. The people could not understand it. I'm going to take my jacket off. I'm sorry. It's hot up here. There are things that come in your life that you don't understand. There are things that we will have questions about. But do you understand every answer is in the Bible? Every answer is in the Bible. She didn't understand. Nicodemus didn't understand. How can I be born again? Do I have to go back into my mother's womb? How? And what does he say in, in, in verse, uh, verse 10? Jesus answered to him saying, Are you a teacher of Israel and you do not know these things? Most assuredly I say to you, We speak what we know and testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. Can I I tell you, whatever comes in your life, whatever comes in your way, trust God. What does Psalms 23 say? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. Let's finish that. We can't just leave right there. Mr. Dana gets aggravated all the time that some of the verses are not in the hymnal. So let's go to the Scriptures. The words are special. The words are true. The words are are here for us to read. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of, of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Whatever you are going through... Whatever time of life you are in right now. I don't know if you feel like an outcast. I don't know if you uh, go through depression. I don't know if you go through this. But I have a father who owns the cattle on a thousand hills. And he owns the hills too. He can make a way when there seems to be no way. There are many questions that will never be answered. Never be answered. I've heard the question many times. Why do, why do good people die? I can't tell you that. 
Why is this? Why is that? Why is that? Why is this? I don't know. But I have a Father who does. And He gives us the Word. What does it say? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not. Don't, don't try to scratch your head and to figure it out because it's not going to be figured out unless the Holy Spirit wants you to learn that. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on thy own understandings. In all thy ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct thy path. Just as Nicodemus was trying to understand, this Samaritan woman was under, trying to understand why are you here? Why are you doing this? Can you say that uh, when the, when the uh, guy was in the road in the story of the Good Samaritan? I, it's not in the Scriptures, cause I'm not, so I'm not going to go there completely. But you look at all these people walking by. And then this guy laying in the road, the Samaritan comes and helps him. He's saying, why is this guy helping me? He's a Samaritan. We don't have any dealings. Because it's a picture of what Jesus did for us. He made a way when there seemed to be no way. I'm the way, the truth, the life. John 14, 6. I'm the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. He has no respecter of persons. I believe that's the right word. He he, he doesn't matter who you are. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. For God commendeth His love toward us. God demonstrates His love toward us. In that while we are sinners, Christ died for us. Whatever you're dealing with, whatever you're going through, I don't know if you feel like an outcast, but God loves you. God loves you. But can I also say, I'm not going to stay there. Because there are a lot of preachers that are preaching the love of God. The love of God. The love of God. God is love. Could we with ink the ocean feel? And every man was inscribed by trade. The love of God is real. The love of God is true. The love of God is forever. It's amazing. But can I also tell you that the wrath of God is just as real? Wouldn't, I wouldn't be doing justice to the Scriptures if I told you about the love but didn't tell you about the wrath. Hebrews chapter 12 says, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For considering... For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. <clears throat> you have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son who he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. And what sons is there whom the Father does not chasten? <clears throat> but if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Can I tell you, God is love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This verse says, in verse 8 of chapter 12 of Hebrews says, But if you are not with 
But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are Ill- illegitimate and not sons. The love of God is real, but the chastening also is real. The wrath is also real. You can read that in the scriptures. What did Jonah tell the Ninevites? In eight words, he says, you better repent or God's going to judge you. What happened to Sodom? Destroyed. Can I tell you, if God is not dealing with you, if the Holy Spirit is not working in and on you, what does verse 8 say? You are not sons. You're an illegitimate son. If the Holy Spirit is not dealing with you, when you are doing wrong, when you are looking at things that are wrong, when you are in a position where you should not be, and the Holy Spirit is not dealing with you, convicting you, and drawing you back to Himself, then you are not saved. That word we use. You are not His. But if you are chastening, guess what? He's correcting you and loving you how a father should. A grand, grandfather, grandmothers. We correct our grandchildren and our sons and our daughters to make them see what God would have them to be. And this is what God is doing to us when He chastens us. He loves us. If He was not chastening us, we would not be His. Proverbs 3.12 says, For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as a father, the son, in whom he delights. Do you understand? He went where the Samaritan woman was. He knew exactly where the Samaritan woman was going to be. He knew exactly the position that Samaritan woman was in. He knows exactly what you are dealing with today. He knows exactly what you have dealt with yesterday and the day before and the day before that. He knows what you will be dealing with tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. But God commended His love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He loves us. But He also chastens us because He loves us. You ever, you ever thought about this? Now, if I know Evan doesn't understand this and, and Caitlin probably doesn't understand this, but you, you remember when your, your parents used to say to you, this hurts me more than it hurts uh, you, I used to thought my dad was nuts. <laughs> Won't you bend over and let me hit you with the bell? But in, until I had kids, I, I didn't really understand that. Something we have to do as a parent, even even when they're older. I still go to my mom and dad. My mom and dad is, uh, I can't remember how old they are, but I'm 45 years old, but I still go to my parents. And my parents still try to correct me and try to give me direction and correction and, uh, and advice. It's the same way with God. We have to go to the Word of God to learn how to live and learn where we need to be. God is there for us. Whatever you're dealing with, give it to God. Let Him have His way with you. Verse 10 says, Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, she's still trying to ask ask questions. She's still trying to figure it out. She said, Then the woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then? Are you going to get living water? Remember, Nicodemus said the same thing. How can it be? Verse 12, Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself? 
as well as his son and his livestock, Jesus answered and said to her, Do you understand Jesus always has the answer? God has the answers. <laughs> John fifteen five. we are nothing without him. We can do nothing without him. Rely on him. Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst, but the water that I shall give him will become in, a, in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. John chapter 7, verse 38. He who believes in me, as scriptures has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. You understand what we did yesterday was not because of us, but was because of God. And the people that came through here, yes, we had all this stuff on the front lawn. Yes, they rode down the road and saw it. But do you understand where you are today is because of God? His purpose, His plan, His will. I'm glad we did that. I'm glad that He directed us to that. But everything we do is because of Him. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Everything that I do is because of him. He's working in and through me. Verse 15, I'm hurrying. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I, I may not thirst, nor come here to draw. Now, I don't know whether or not Nicodemus, I, I, I believe in chapter 7, I believe that uh, what chapter 7 of John says, I do believe Nicodemus uh, got saved. I, I believe Jesus, uh, Nicodemus came to know Jesus as his personal Savior. I do believe that the Samaritan woman came to know Jesus as his personal Savior because if you'll read in this story later, she went into the, the city Telling about the good news. Do you understand that everybody that Jesus healed on his ministry? How that hurt. <clears throat> Do you understand that everything that Jesus healed on his ministry went and told? Even the people that God told them not to, Jesus told them not to tell, they ran and told anyway. Whatever you're going through, don't let's just, just don't go around in the mully grubs. I think of the picture of uh, Eeyore in Winnie the Pooh. Sometimes I feel like Eeyore. Nobody loves me. Everybody hates me. What was the song? I guess I'll go eat worms. Because of Jesus. I have hope. He is my hope. He's my living hope. If you don't get anything else about, out of this message, the Samaritan woman did not know what she was going to encounter in that day. But Jesus knew where, when, and how he was going to meet her that day. But he needed to go to Samaria. The Samaritan woman has so many questions. You may have so many questions. But can I tell you, Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time, this message. The story of the Samaritan woman how you provided the way, how you made the way, how you gave her the living water. Lord, thank you for giving us the living water as well, that we may have eternal life. Just please guide and direct us today. Be with our community as we try to reach out. Or just help us to glorify you in everything that we do. Lord, help us not to get down in the dumps. Or if we do get down in the dumps, may we see your will and your purpose and your plan for our life. Even in the valley, you are there. 
God, we thank you. We praise you. We honor your name. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.